everyone. It's Anne at Martin House Flowers. So today I thought I would just do a flower arrangement. I'm not sure if you guys really enjoy these videos when I do arrangements because I don't seem to get as many views versus when I'm planting, but um, I did get myself a new vase, new vase. I've had to train myself to say vase instead of vase because my husband likes to make fun of me. <laughs> I guess maybe Canadians say vase, um, but guess who's in the greenhouse with me today? It's Eddie. So. <laughs> Greg's working from home today and he's got a couple calls, so I need to get Eddie outside. But what is he doing? He's barking from the greenhouse. So let's have a look at him before we start. Eddie, what are you doing? Poor guy has had a lot of allergies. He's getting a haircut on Thursday, so hopefully he'll feel better after the haircut. But hey, buddy, let's be quiet, okay? Let's check out what the temperature is here today. Let's see. It is just over 80 degrees, according to my thermometer. And the humidity hydro hygrometer is at 22, roughly. But anyway, so here are the blooms that I cut from the cut flower garden just yesterday evening. When Greg got home from work, we sat outside on the uh, out there on the on the bench, and he sat there and watched me cut some flowers. It was a really nice evening, and then we took Eddie for a nice evening walk. And um, so I thought I would just try this out. How are you all doing? So I picked this very um, cool kind of antique type, um, what, do I, what would I call this sort of finish? It's kind of a, a whitewash metal um, antique finish. There used to be a term for it, I'll think of it, when I used to do framing, I used to do custom framing. And um, so I'm just gonna break everything and put them here. Lately, when I use these vases, I don't really, I don't usually put a grid. But I've been thinking, I was thinking today of going out um, to visit my local garden center, maybe go see Barb at, um, go see Barb at the garden market to see what is, what she has for ideas. Um, for my urns because I think in my last video where I did some decorating um, where I did the pumpkins in a in a dish in a in the three-tiered tray on the front porch I don't want to tear this I'm just going to snip it off um, I had shown everyone how a ha half of my half of my urns are pretty much done and so I pulled out whatever was not doing great. I think it was adjuratum. No, no, not adjuratum. Think of it. The white, the white and the yellow trailing annuals um, were done. And so all that's left is the blue my mind. Um, blue my mind. Uh, dwarf. Dwarf. Those climbing things. Anyway. I think I'm at a loss for names for plants today, but it'll come to me and I'll put it on the screen. Happy to, to note that a lot of other people doing YouTube videos <laughs> have the same brain fart with plant names. But look at this bunch of Cosmos. I decided to, it was actually a nice like three, four branching and I, it, I left most of the foliage and the flowers were just opening. But the thing about Cosmos, especially the white ones, is they get eaten by the bugs really quickly, like that one. So, but again, it's just for at home. And um, so I was thinking about how I have been doing 
you know, because my arrangements and my cut flowers have been pretty much staying home and I've given, um, I've given away a few to neighbors, snapdragons to our neighbors who looked after our, our house or our garden when we were away at the end of June. And um, to my other neighbor who was on the HOA that was quite helpful when we were trying to get approval. Um, so I'm trying to think if I've, you know, oh, and, and another neighbor. So basically I've been able to give away a few, but I was starting to feel like, is it, you know, these, these flowers, the zinnias, the snapdragons, snapdragons were my first set of blooms and stock were my first set of blooms as well, or second set, which were one and done, which I won't repeat. So I was trying to think about what, um, what I can do different next year because I feel like it's sort of the same, same type of flowers, but these have all been, you know, between the amaranth, the snapdragons, the zinnias, the cosmos, um, the salvia, those have all been really successful. And, but what else can I do? So I know I've already mentioned that I've picked up, ordered most of my seeds for next year, which I think are most of mine for next year. Um, cause I, I know I have limited, limited space with only six raised beds. I have technically eight raised beds, but the two tall ones are supposed to be dedicated to veggies and herbs, peppers, tomatoes. Um, and I was already accused of overgrowing marigolds, zinnias, and um, nasturtiums in there this year. So, um, but anyway, if I'm, if I'm going to go to market next year with flowers, are these enough? Um, are, are these varieties, these um, zinnias, amaranth, cosmos, snapdragons, celosia, um, salvia? So that's basically six. I don't want to have bachelor's buttons, which were a very late bloomer. So five or six blooms or varieties, are those enough for... Um, growing cut flowers to sell at market that's sort of the question so you know i know some popular um cut flowers include what are some of them that they include i'm gonna have to well i have marigolds too but um anyway i'm just wondering if they're missing out on anything um that I need to grow absolutely next year. So if you guys have suggestions on cut flowers that you've successfully grown, I'd love to hear about it. Love to hear, um, you know, what, hey, it's really nice to have a tall one, isn't it? Seasons are shorter. Look at that. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear suggestions on what you've all been able to grow that I haven't done. Um, my friend, my local friend here that I, oh, I did give a, an arrangement to her, to Teresa. Um, she, I gave her an arrangement and she's told me, I think within three or four days after coming to visit, coming for dinner, she said that, Eddie, don't be digging. <laughs> he's, uh oh, he's digging my gravel but I think it's just to get a comfy spot or maybe he's trying to take some no I think he's just trying to get comfortable oh it's okay I'm gonna let him I mean he's kind of trapped here and this is a new thing being on the gravel instead of carpet and maybe he's finding some little bugs I don't know poor buddy did I mention that Eddie's having really bad allergies I don't believe in spending hundreds of dollars on dog allergy pills. So I, I researched it and checked um, Claritin and Benadryl, which is uh, Diphenadrine and Lortidine. Lortidine are safe for dogs. So Lortidine did not work well for him. But Benadryl, which is Diphenadrine, I think it's called. 
the non-branded name, um, seems to be working better for him. And my allergies are seem to be a little better. But so what are the uh, dahlias? Dahlias, I have some that I grew from seed, but they're pretty, um, they're kind of more, they're more of a shorter stem, the variety that I, I grew. I think I put them on a short video. Um, and uh, Lysianthus, that's the other one that I know a lot of cut flower farmers grow, and those are my friend's favorite, Teresa's favorite. But I've, what I've heard and read about was that they do need they, um you almost need to do like a um um you need to to put them in in um those covered uh you need to cover them and grow them really early spring so and they take the take longer to grow look at that pretty yellow one so I definitely have, in terms of varieties, I have the same seeds and I haven't started collecting seeds yet because I have so many for next year that I want to use up. But I think in future I will. Um, and maybe I'll try my hand at, at um, you know, cross-pollinating some, I don't know, or, or cross-breeding them. But the Queen Lime series are definitely some of my favorite, but I do like having a variety where that's the, the bright pink one, and then there's the orange lime, and this is the red, queen red lime. Um, and I like, I like even Black Prince, uh, the Snapdragon, even though it's a shorter variety. I love those dark colors, and I love that I've been able to have um, more reds and raspberries and oranges as the summer comes to an end. Um, it just gives it a little bit more of a late summer transition fall. And I love this variety here of Snapdragon that's sort of a striped raspberry. Poor guy's about to fall off. Oh, too bad. Um, so, Anyway, um, yeah, I was also thinking, I think I started to talk about what I can do for my front urns that are, you know, we will be getting, oh, this guy is starting to get, we will be getting frost. Our first frost can happen anywhere between middle of September to um, middle of October. And most likely, I, I googled for my town that it's, more like um, October 15th. And I know in a, a couple of years ago, we actually had snow on Halloween, but that cupcake Cosmo, just gorgeous. I think it's just one of my favorites. It's such a fun, whimsical filler. Eddie, what are you doing? He keeps, he keeps digging the gravel away to, I guess, create a little bit of a, oh, some of this breeze coming through. So I'm really looking forward to being here in the greenhouse this fall. And today was supposed to be about 80 degrees, but there's such a nice breeze. And I figured out for the first time how to pull up the screen on the screen door. <laughs> Had a little trouble. Greg came out to help me. But it's, get, it's just really pretty. It's just such a nice breeze. And at the moment, there is shade on this side of the greenhouse. I know later in the afternoon, the sun comes up again. And um, But Greg, uh, Eddie's such a mama's boy that if I left him inside while Greg was working, um, guaranteed he'd be barking and complaining that I'm out here. So, I watched a few videos today of some of my favorite YouTubers, like Robbie, who is Janie's friend, 
Robbie from Visit My Visit Our Garden, and Jamie, of course, who was so great about introducing some of us um, newcomers with YouTube channels and anyone else that you know entered their gardens into her Show Me Your Garden series. Um, so anyway, and some of them are, I'm just envious of everyone out, out west that is still planting like crazy. And I want to thank you because my September planting video got um, something like three and a half thousand views. And that's up there with my 5,000 view videos. And I've been trying to figure out what type of videos, what content you guys are interested in because um, when I'm when I do arrangements I feel like I don't get very many views and there doesn't seem to be a lot of interest um, but when I'm planting there's there's um, more interest um, which I find sometimes a little monotonous because we're just digging and digging but um, the issue is, is that here in Zone 5B in Northern Illinois, our planting season is coming to an end. And as much as I was planting in September, um, I did plant in September, it, I, the concern now is that, you know, we're approaching our first frost date and I don't want to risk um, doing too much, too much that way. I'm not so worried about planting trees it's those are those are really those are fine to plant um, but the last tree our dappled willow that's right behind me there it it's safe to, to plant trees but some perennials are a, a little bit um, it's a little bit iffy if they have fine um, you know a fine root system it might be a little iffy so I'm just trying to think about what kind of content um, would be interesting to everyone. So I'd appreciate it if you guys would, it's really bright in here, so I'm kind of squinting. If you would comment below um, as to what type of content you'd, you'd love to see. Um, I have, you know, my seeds to show and share with everyone. I was thinking instead of going through the whole gamut of seeds, I have one of those big photo boxes with probably a few hundred packages of seeds, maybe not that many, but um, instead of going through each and every one, maybe just each video go through, you know, a handful of them, the ones that I'm going to be working on. So, you know, uh, there are ones that you do eight to 10 weeks before your, your last frost date and, and then five to six weeks and three to four and so forth. And then some that I'm just going to experiment and grow in the greenhouse over the winter. Um, like I, I bought some fall colored, like darker colored pansies that I wanted to try and um, grow in the greenhouse. And then just so I'd have some color. So I was thinking about that. I have those just put aside and um so yeah if that's of any interest so i'm just sort of curious because this will be my first fall oh school bus going by school's getting out so patina that's the word this has a real patina effect which is kind of that antiquing that I used to do custom framing when I had an art gallery back in Canada. And I had, um, it was a very historic building I was in. It was a 1903 building. And I used to sell a lot of Canadian original art landscapes. Um, and I lived in King Township in Canada. It was very much like horse country and so landscapes did really well and antique frames and um, anything kind of vintage historic um, and that's what this this whitewash patina look this antiquing the browning looks like and 
I picked this up at Home Goods for seven dollars on clearance. Like, I just I love it, and it's uh oh a bee gun in here. Of course, it wants to pollinate my flowers. <laughs> I'm gonna have to show you Eddie over in the corner. He's resting. He's he's feeling happy right now. Love that. Look at that orange queen lime. Ah. So yeah, that's something I wanted to um, ask everyone. And the other thing I wanted to kind of touch on, I follow, um, you know, several garden channels and it's just been sad to hear a few stories, sad stories that a handful of YouTubers um, are going through, like just personal tragedies and how brave they are to be sharing their stories um, with us on YouTube. And I always think like, you know, if I were to go through something, um, really tough in my life would i and i have <laughs> we all have a story or two um you know everyone has a story but i always wonder if i were to go through something tragic um would i be able to be brave enough to talk about it on youtube and i guess those people that have been brave enough to tell their stories lately of you know their, their tragedies or personal tragedies they have they've been on youtube longer a long a long time they've got quite a following they have they've developed friendships and um and have a real community a sense of community and i was thinking about that and how that really is why i think many of us have have started YouTube and especially gardening. I mean, it's, um, it's not a self-help per se type of channel, but the, I think the type of people that do gather and watch YouTube, like what is a, what is a, a person that, what are the characteristics of a person that loves gardening and has gardening as a passion and loves flowers and nature and trees and so forth what what do they those do those people have in common and i think about my mom who started my interest in gardening i'm sure she was the one because obviously i grew up with a garden um my longest my furthest memory of having a garden was when I was, you know, a little girl and we had a garden and a pool back in the Philippines where I was born. I was under the age of six. And then when we moved to Canada and our first house that I remember where I grew up, you know, spent many years from elementary school to graduating high school was in Chatham, Ontario, in southwestern Ontario. And she had um, a garden with roses and and lots of fruit trees and she grew a lot of rhubarb which i didn't love <laughs> but you know my favorite flower according to her were painted daisies which i think were a lot like zinnias and when i went off to college when i'd come home for weekends she'd send me back with a vase of painted daisies and it just always you know gardening and flowers just i think brings so much joy to people it can it can be a sense of comfort you know when we give flowers when people die pass away and obviously at funerals you see lots of there's a lovely aphid um flowers and um and as audrey hepburn said and i coined that phrase on my facebook channel or facebook page that um to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow and so Gardening, you know, has brought people a lot of joy, peace, hope, 
um, that's a place of refuge. And um, it just, you know, like I, I retired a few months ago and it just, what I wanted to do immediately was to really focus on my garden. And, you know, we're in this, uh, it's coming up to three years, but really we've only been gardening here for two years because it was spring of 2022. So this is our second year that we've really put time and effort into the garden. And I just wanted more than anything to focus on the garden. And it's definitely my passion. And my husband, Greg, says it's my, it's an obsession. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm not, I don't feel, I feel like it's, it's my, not only just my new job, but if I don't go into the garden, it, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel like I had a, a fulfilling enough day. That's not to say sometimes in the heat of summer, you don't need a, a day off. And I've said, oh, good, it's raining today. And, and I think, yay, I get a day off. You know, you're, you have days like that for sure. Um, but it definitely, I don't know, it just has given me purpose. It's given me peace when, I, when I'm sad and I'm missing my family back home in Canada. Um, it just brings me so much comfort and joy and it's a distraction and it, I don't know, it just, all those things. So yeah, I just, I feel for all these people that I have been watching um, on YouTube who have been sharing their personal stra uh, tragedies and um you know there's can't eat the grass she's going through a divorce and up in Kelowna and um there's the rose geek who just recently talked about her husband um you know how their house was burned down and how he, he then took his life only recently and there's Bear Flower Farm, whose daughter was diagnosed with cancer, and just so many tragedies, and it's just touched me in a way that it, it's like it happened to a friend, and even though I'm just a subscriber, and I just, you know, I've just been following them for, for however long, I've, I guess, probably about a couple of years that I've been following some of these gardening channels or just a few months for some of them. And it just, just it, my heart hurts for them. And I feel, I feel so sad for my, I feel like they're friends. And so, yeah, I guess it's just, it's been, it's become a sense of a real sense of community. And, you know, when you have, more than one conversation back and forth through the comments with certain people that follow your channel and you feel like, Hey, we've, we've become friends, you know, and like Jen at pretty little garden, I referred to her as my friend. And that's because pretty much on every video that I've posted and every video she's posted in the last few months, you know, we always comment back and forth and we're just supporting each other and, um, you know, commenting and giving each other positive feedback. And, and um, it's just such a, a great feeling to have become friends, you know, um, YouTube friends. Um, and I don't know if that sounds silly and superficial to some of you, but I don't think it does sound silly to, to any of you that are watching because I think you start to feel the same way I feel and that when you're watching someone create a garden, plant a bed, uh, create an arrangement, um, do any kind of work in the garden, it just makes you feel like you're a friend visiting and you're just joining 
in their passion. And if you sat through most of those videos for more than a few minutes, and you've really sat there for half an hour and watched them dig and plant, you're just as much of a passionate person about gardening and flowers and growing things. And, and so you just feel this real sense of um, friendship and camaraderie with them. So anyway, I'm just rambling about this topic because the last few nights and weeks I've been watching some of these sad stories yeah. on YouTube and I just wanted to share with all of you that um, how I feel about it and how I appreciate so much that you guys actually tune in and watch my channel because you know I'm just this person out here in the Midwest and and admittedly I've you know I'm kind of out of my element because I'm not from here and um, I do this as a form of just a little bit of friendship and community and um, just brings me back home to wherever home is, you know, and my memories of my childhood and other gardens that I've planted and, and cultivated and it just, it feels like home to me. So. Anyway, I hope I haven't rambled on too much, but I just wanted to thank you all for joining me today and I hope you will comment as to what type of um, content you'd like to see in my future videos as fall starts to approach. And, um, you know, I'll be planting tulips and, and bulbs. I, I did place a few orders online and it'll be a surprise as to what comes. Um, in the next few weeks, but I'll be digging in the garden still up until the fall um, Until you know last year I was planting yellow tulips in the raised bed there in February because I somehow managed to order tulips even into the winter months and when there was a mild February month there I was in there um, Planting tulips and they came up so we'll see if they come back again. So yeah, so I'll definitely be um, planting bulbs, more bulbs this year and some more tulips and containers with bulbs and um, probably storing them here in the greenhouse. Whereas last year I stored them in the garage. I made the mistake of leaving one out on the front porch and all the tulips that were in there rotted, unfortunately, but that was a test. I decided, you know, it was a really heavy winterized pot and I just couldn't bring it in. So I'll be doing that. I'll be um, hopefully bringing some of those mandevillas that are out on the patio here, bringing them into the greenhouse if there's room. I do want to save them. I just want to save whatever plants, not to just save money, but just I can't bear to see them die from the frost. If I can save their lives and, and bring them through another spring summer season it's going to be the most satisfying i think much like planting seeds and watching them grow and you know i see all of my beds out there i've those six six to eight raised beds or eight raised beds of everything from vegetables to flowers and herbs and i've grown all of those every one of them from seed and not only am i proud but i'm just so it's just the most satisfying thing planting the seed and nurturing them, watering them, babying them for months and then planting them in the ground and then having this, this to share with all of you and eat tomatoes and lettuce and have herbs in our casseroles and our stews. Like it's just been the most satisfying and makes me so happy. And, and I know it makes my family happy. So Anyway, I'm going to close it there, and I just wanted to thank you all for being with me today, and I look forward to our next video. Okay, bye-bye. There's Eddie. He managed to stay quiet, and he dug a little bit of gravel around to make it comfortable. So thanks again for joining me.
So it was Greg's birthday. And what did he want for his birthday? Very cool. What does it do? That's so cool. I think you've been dreaming about this for a while. <laughs>